So it is Labor Day weekend. Cheers. And uh, all work and no play makes Brian a very dull boy. Is that what it is? But I was able to get off early, put a half day in Friday. And then one of the biggest benefits of uh, working for Aquascape is uh, he truly, truly, he being the pond guy, wants people to enjoy their family. And the other benefit is he's got a lot of toys. That guy buys some silly things. And every now and then we reap the rewards. And if you look behind me, I've got the family getting excited about that thing. So I thought it was gonna be a pain in the butt, but it seems to be pretty easy. We pulled the truck right up to the back here, hooked up the little compressor, and uh, next thing is pull that baby in there. And I'm guessing for the next two days, the kids are gonna be just absolutely exhausted. Are you excited? Oh yeah, there's Grace, Andrew. That's what it's all about. So a couple days off, chill, relax, and we'll see you guys next Monday, and we'll do that quote together, promise. Thank you, the pond guy, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pond Guy! <laughs> yep, it rained last night. <laughs> Still part of the job. Still the worst day in the field is uh, better than the best day in the office. Love it out here. It's um, it is a sloppy mess, but it's like I said, it's just part of the job. Rained all day yesterday, so that was our Tuesday coming off of Labor Day weekend. And by the way, we had a ton of fun out there at the lake. Thank you again, Greg, for letting us use uh, the big slide. It was, it was hilarious. Thank you. But we're back out here at our Downers Grove job. Things are definitely moving along, but I've got a super busy week. I'm out here all day today, probably all day tomorrow. Still have to um, get some quotes done. And then we have fall sale this week, which used to be fall festival, but we moved it just to a really convenient two day sale at the store where we try to get rid of all of our leftover fish, all of our plants, things that we don't want to inventory throughout the winter. And they just come and get stuff. So they get their heaters and their bubblers, stuff for the winter. They get more water treatments, their cold water fish food. We have sales on everything, the lights and that kind of stuff. So people come in and, and I love it because it's a time to reconnect with our customers, kind of see what they're up to. And it's just a fun, fun event. So I've got to get back to the store and kind of get that store all set up and show what show you guys what's going on. I know I'm mumbling, but it's just cause. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, guys, just got home. Had a super productive day out there, minus all the mud and slop and everything else we had to go through. Told myself the second I got home, I was gonna work on that estimate and get that drawing done. I kind of started, but because I'm such a procrastinator, I think because it's almost seven o'clock, I think I'll just do it early in the morning. So we can all wake up together do our morning ritual, have some coffee by the pond, but I'm gonna do exactly what I do when I get home this time of night, go sit by my pond, relax, enjoy, and uh, feed some fish. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna do. The next morning. This is why you shouldn't procrastinate. <laughs> it's early, early in the morning. I think that's at 5.06, it's not that early. I overslept a touch, but uh, Procrastination is the death of me. And so what happens is I really should have just stayed at that consultation and did the quote while I was there. It would have taken me probably another 45 minutes just to do it while I was there, double checking measurements and everything else. But now I'm gonna have to do a small little drawing just to kind of give myself a point of reference and then figure out that quote. But before we do anything, I'm gonna need some coffee. Let's get this baby brewing. Let's do this. Coffee in hand, really important. Just black. Oh my god, already feeling better. Can you see can you see the difference? <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so let's let's do this quick little drawing together. I got my pad of paper here. This is uh, actually an old drawing I had done. This is still a project we may do sometime. This is a 57 by 50 foot pond, big deck. 45 foot circle deck that kind of hangs out over the side, big boulder wall here, dive stones like kind of over in here, stepping stones going across. This whole thing overflows into like a 7,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system and then weeping walls all along the side over here that feed a stream that go down kind of into this space. 
like this way. Another little deck from their walkout basement, bridges. Crazy, but that's about a million dollar, million dollar project. And uh, we're still in the planning phases of it. But the reason I don't like doing drawings and the reason I'm showing you this is because there's no way the customer understands what I'm talking about when I do this. These weeping walls and stepping stones and infinity edge pools and you know, 30 foot bridges. It's really hard for them to picture that. This is a trampoline that intersects the pond so they can kind of jump off. It was more of like a playground for kids than anything else. I'd have to take this and then translate this out into their yard. And unless you start doing the 3D dimensional type stuff, you're never really gonna understand it. And even the 3D stuff isn't gonna show the rocks exactly the way they're gonna go. Now the reason I've gotta do a drawing is because I really need it as a point of reference for me to do my bid. I think we said we had like a 30 by 25 foot pond so I'm going to draw that with an infinity edge, some dive rocks, a cave and so let me get drawn that and then we'll come back and start doing the quote based off the drawing. One more set. 20 minutes later. Just finished up doing the sketch getting some preliminary numbers but before um, we go any further let's <laughs> do one more of these. Get that brewing. This is going to be a really really cool project. Sometimes when I actually do the drawing I uh, even get more and more excited about the possibilities and as you start putting pencil to paper you start getting even more creative coming up with different things and so I'm really excited about the whole swim cave tunnel thing that leads to the jump platform but um, it's going to get expensive and I don't even know the cost yet until we start punching in the numbers so we are going to do that together. All right. So it's pretty light for you guys right now because I just did a pencil drawing. I found my kids markers here which will help a little bit. This is roughly their existing patio right here. They had a walkway that kind of came in this way and this is the pond. So let's just outline kind of the shape of the pond in blue. This is the deep area right in here. This is an upper pool that feeds the big waterfall. Waterfalls I try to always kind of illustrate with like a, a big arrow. This is going to be infinity edge slash rainwater harvesting system. And we're going to do something different in there. And then I'll show you the stream section a little later. I know you can't see that right now. So a couple things. First, when we're trying to calculate the size of a pond, we need to know the dimensions of the pond. So I've got a 40 foot by 25 foot pond and I love using graph paper because I can scale everything out. Right now, every square is equal to one foot. So I've got a 40 foot by 25 foot pond. I have it six feet deep. Once I've known the size of the pond, then I can figure out the size of my liner. The other things I need to check for liner are my intake bay area, I'm going to have a bog filter probably over in here and then this upper pool. So I've got a few different items I have to calculate liner for plus then the stream over in this area. So when I calculate a pond, I need a few things. I need the dimensions of the pond, size of my waterfall, length of stream, my intake bay, and then really important, a retaining wall. If you guys remember from the video from last time, not too much further back from this pool was a swing set that sat kind of like right back in here area. So if I'm going to build a four foot high waterfall over in here, by the time that berm comes up, I don't have enough space to bring this um, soil back down to this ground level over here without it looking like a volcano. So I'm going to have to build a pretty big retaining wall that goes all the way back Kind of like so. And so I measure that space and then I can figure out how much rock I need. So when I'm bidding out a pond, I use this. A lot of boring math later. All right guys, I finished this and we're gonna go with, into this in detail here in a second. But I wanna go over the design with you one more time and you guys guess what you think the price of this 40 by 25 foot pond with a four foot high waterfall, the cave, the 3000 gallon rainwater harvesting system, a bog filter, a stream, a 10 foot bridge would cost at six feet deep. This is the jumping platform that'll come down. So you jump off of this at four to three feet high down into six feet of water. I've got some stairs that come up into this five foot culvert pipe that comes all the way back and through here. At the five foot culvert pipe, 
which has water in it up until about this point. There'll be another three foot pipe that comes vertical up through the berm with a ladder out to a little slate platform walkway out to this area here where you can jump. This is kind of intense. Waterfall, not a big deal. Four foot high is pretty big, especially in a flat backyard, but we need a little upper pool to feed that. Another huge thing is this giant retaining wall. I almost need 60 tons of boulders just to do this retaining wall. To give you an idea of how much rock that is, the whole pond needs 75. So almost the same amount of stone goes in the retaining wall as the pond to pull off this big berm over in here. We have the whole pond then overflows through a split waterfall. I tried to bring this pond out a little further so this waterfall would face this area. Remember this is sunken down in here. The yard actually goes pretty low here and then kind of comes up like that. So it's easy to pull off this infinity edge. Right in here where these stone stairs come up, I'm gonna do a slate bottom floor in this area just so they don't have to walk through a bunch of gravel to get into here so it's just a nice smooth transition. This will all be just regular pond gravel and we'll probably do more of like a sand bottom or very, very fine gravel bottom in here. I have five different power heads, over 20 different lights, pathway lights. This is a big giant bridge. This is a stream. And then we have a pretty large wetland filter to filter this whole thing. So lots of bells and whistles. With all that, now let's take a look at this bid sheet here. So I use this bid sheet. It's actually just an app on my iPad and the numbers app. And I can go through and I can bid out any pond ranging from a $2,000 water feature up to a $2 million water feature. And all I do is I plug in these different numbers. So as you see on the top, I've got my skimmer and my biofalls. I'm not using skimmers or biofalls on a large pond like this. We're going to use that infinity edge and wetland filters. So all of that stuff kind of sits right in here. I'm going to need three pump vaults, nine extensions. I've got a large snorkel vault. Two of these centipedes are gonna be used for the bog filter. Another one's gonna be used for something else I do in the pond. 24 small aqua blocks going in my wetland filter and then 100 aqua blocks going into my infinity edge area over there. That'll give me that 3,000 gallon uh, basin. I've got three different size liners. The pond is gonna get a 50 by 100. Your bog filter is gonna get a 25 by 40. And then I got a 20 by 75, which will allow me to do the stream plus plus that upper pool above the waterfall. I've got a lot of fabric. I always go with a lot of extra fabric. You can see my total square footage of liner is 75. I've got more fabric than I do liner because it's cheap insurance. I even put another 4,500 square feet of the rock pad stuff on there. That's that really thick fabric. As I come back down through here, I've got um, my pumps. I need a booster pump, one to feed his vegetable garden from the rain exchange. The other one will go to that water cannon that he wanted off the top of his uh, dive platform. And then I have four of these five to nines, one to feed the waterfall, another to feed the stream, one to feed the bog, and then the jets coming out of the swim cave. I got a whole lot of pipe that needs to go in there, almost uh, 400 feet. <laughs> Feet of three inch pipe, awful lot of lights, lighting up the platform, the caves, the waterfalls, etc. etc. Down here, there's the transformer for that. All right, I come up to this side for every pump. I need a check valve because all the plumbing I'm using uh, is three inch. I have to do a two to three inch conversion. I put some seam tape on, even though I don't plan on doing any seams, I just expect it to be there for emergencies or at least to seam down some folds in the liner. I've got ball valves and manifolds. I put on the three spheres just thinking I might use them someplace in the pond and I've got enough pump to uh, steal some water if I needed to to feed those spheres. As I come down through here, I got five power heads in the pond just to circulate water from different areas. I've got a very large bridge. That cave ladder and jump platform is gonna be $8,500. Miscellaneous plumbing supplies, this is the key one. There's all these unforeseen I don't know about that I'm gonna run into throughout the project through drainage issues, through miscellaneous fittings, and I wanna make sure I've got that covered on there. So that'll cover all that. Install kit, that covers all my behind the scenes stuff. My PVC primer and glue, my silicone, all the stuff I need to attach everything. The foam and the foam gun are what we use to seal the waterfalls. Stone, need an awful lot of stone. 
So I've got um, 175 tons of stone between the waterfalls, the stream, retaining wall, and the pond. And then I've got some stone stairs and that slate floor in there. Move to the gravel, 25 tons for the bog gravel. Now I'm not gonna use 25 tons of stone just for the bog gravel. A lot of that bog gravel, the cheaper gravel, gets used as backfill around waterfall stones and stuff. So we'll just keep moving through there. Decorative gravel, soil removal is a big one. There's no way. I'm going to use all the soil needed to build that berm, so a lot of it's got to come out. 25 yards of sand just to give it another cushion. So I have $141,000 just in materials. They throw some tax on there. The delivery fee is what the stone guy is going to charge me to bring out the multiple loads of stone. Equipment charge covers all my excavators, skid steers, dingoes, sod cutters, etc., etc. And that's how many labor hours I think I can get the whole thing done. So the grand total... 277. So do you guys want to hear the good news or the bad news? Me too. <laughs> good news as always, but um, now let's go with the bad news. Bad news is I just got off the phone with our large ecosystem pond customer over there and shared with him the price. And I said, hey, do you want to take a seat? Because I'm going to take a seat. He said, I'm guessing the price is a little higher than uh, what we imagined. I said, yeah, it's probably about three times higher than what we talked about. We were at 270 something, I think we said. And, he, and so the bad news is he's not going to do that. But here's the good news. He did increase his budget and he wants to do something for around 150. And my exact words to him were, if I can't design something epic, something inspiring, something fun for $150,000, then shame on me, because that's an enormous amount of money. I just can't design that. And you asked me, Mr. Customer, to put every bell and whistle on there possible, and that's what I did. So when we start talking about caves that you can swim through and climb up out of onto dive platforms, when we talk about 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting systems, I mean, just the 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system, if we take that away, you're gonna save about 30 grand. That's like three days of work for us to put that in by the time we do the overlaps, the waterfalls, all the aqua blocks, so on and so on. The other big thing we can take away to help lower that price is the depth. And you have to remember a six foot deep pond and a four foot deep pond to a kid is the same. That water is over their head. And that's, <laughs> that's all that matters to them. They want to be able to jump in and swim around. They don't need to dive. They don't need to do backflips and all that kind of stuff. We can still make it a lot of fun at a four foot depth. So we'll probably compromise. I know he was saying five, maybe we'll compromise at four and a half. But when we make it four and a half feet deep rather than six, we save on liner, we save on rock, we save on the labor of putting in all of that extra rock. The other thing we're gonna do is lower the waterfall. So instead of having a four foot high waterfall, if we do a three foot high waterfall, not only does the labor change in the building of the waterfall, we also lower that retaining wall that we talked about on the backhand side. So when we take our 60 tons of boulders that we needed for a retaining wall and cut it in half because we've lowered the waterfall, we also save on labor and everything else. So I'm very, very comfortable we can get something in for 150. I can't wait to show you that project in the future. Unfortunately, it'll be next year, but we're gonna do it. So we'll have to refer back to this. The other good news is he said, hey, let's get the front yard one done right away. And that one came in at 45. So we're gonna do that and I'll show you guys the whole uh, design we came up for 45 because it's really, really cool. I'm showing you guys how to estimate a pond from beginning to end and all the things that go into it and what's going on in my head and the things that I have to think of before we even construct. Know that this pond, you probably need a PhD in pond estimating. This is not a normal pond. I would love to show you guys at some point how to estimate more of a typical backyard pond, maybe something a little bit smaller, something that's a little bit more relative to the average space and maybe the average size project we actually do. This one's really, really complicated, but I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show you what goes on in my head and, and how I translate it down to paper. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me with that estimate. Hopefully it was educational. Probably wasn't that much fun. Estimating never really is. I always tell our customers my favorite part is just building. I would love to give everybody a pond for free, but it's a necessary evil and we do have to quote these things out. I know that was a very complicated design and I rushed through it very fast. I 
hope at some point again I can show you another estimate and maybe something a little bit more simpler. I've still got a busy week ahead. I need to meet up with Andrew. We've got fall sale going on this weekend and I can't wait to show you how that goes next week. Hey guys, if you want me to keep doing this stuff, the life of Brian and more of kind of the behind the scenes, make sure you comment below. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you want to see. Do you want to see more designs? Do you want to see more sales? Do you want to see more field stuff? Just let me know and I'll do it.